Russia has successfully tested its first 50-qubit universal quantum computer and developed a domestic neuromorphic processor called Altai. What opportunities do these innovations offer? Will it be possible to buy a quantum computer in a store to play tanks? And why has Russia gotten a chance to make a dramatic leap forward in the field of computing? We'll discuss this, share a new rescue story, and offer an educational recommendation after a brief positive news summary. Another batch of BMP3S with extra protection has been delivered to the troops. In the Nizhny Novgorod region, the lead passenger motor ship of Project 0840 has been launched. Production has started in Moscow for printed circuit board machines. In Karelia, a feed mill. In Vologda region, a pile pipe plant. In Irkutsk region, a metal structures plant. In Novosibirsk, a video surveillance systems plant. And in Kursk region, a waste processing complex. Animal feed production in Kuban. Russian school children won eight medals at the first International Cybersecurity Olympiad in Singapore. The Russian 50-qubit quantum computer based on ions has successfully passed a test trial, paving the way for the creation of serial models and their commercial use. This is a significant achievement, and to understand it, you need to know the following. At the moment, many countries and corporations are developing their own quantum projects. And you've probably heard about computers with hundreds or even thousands of qubits. So it might seem that our 50 qubit computer is outdated, but that's not the case at all. The thing is, the number of qubits by itself isn't a good parameter for comparison. It's like comparing classical computers only by processor clock speed, ignoring the number of cores, architecture, memory size, and other parameters. For an adequate comparison, you need to consider not only the number of qubits, but also frequency, coherence time, connectivity, quantum volume, and benchmark results. For example, the world's most powerful D-Wave with 5,000 or more qubits is actually a highly specialized device, a so-called quantum annular designed exclusively for solving optimization problems. And it's simply impossible to compare it with our universal computer since these are fundamentally different devices but even comparing universal computers with each other is not that simple. They can be built on different platforms with qubits represented by quantum dots, atoms, molecules, superconductors, or light particles. Russia currently possesses all of the above mentioned platforms, and there are only three such countries in the world, including ours. Our scientists have concluded that at the level of up to 50 qubits, ion-based computers are the most advanced among quantum devices. What we have created is not a prototype, but a full-fledged platform for conducting research and solving problems, which will now be improved and scaled up. Now let me explain why this is needed. Quantum computing is surrounded by much speculation and hype today, for now, these are complex and finicky devices that only outperform classical systems under certain conditions and on specific tasks. And they are often used in combination with those very classical systems rather than on their own. However, progress is clear and major players take quantum computing prospects very seriously. To the point that even today, they are already implementing so-called post-quantum encryption algorithms preparing for the moment when quantum machines will be able to efficiently break the widely used asymmetric crypto algorithms of today. No, none of us will be able to buy such a computer in a store, but we will probably be able to access some computations on it through a cloud platform. In any case, the quantum race is already in full swing, and its participants want to be the first to get the most stable and powerful computer, which threatens to seriously disrupt the balance of power. Although it is mainly stated that such computers are needed for purely peaceful purposes, 
such as creating new medicines, materials, and artificial intelligence systems. It should be understood that all modern technologies today are dual use. And the military are interested in being able to decrypt enemy messages and protect their own, create advanced missile defense systems, autonomous drones, heat-resistant materials, and other means capable of providing a decisive advantage on the battlefield. That's why it's impossible to stop the race. It's important that Russia not only participates, but also achieves good results. And along with that, there's another area where we have a chance to break ahead. Recently, the world's most valuable company once again became the one known as a manufacturer of graphics processors. In the 90s, it started as a startup and its founders believed that computer games would become more and more complex and would require special accelerators. The calculation turned out to be correct, but the real golden age began with the advent of neural networks. It turned out that graphics processors performed the operations needed for neural computations quickly and efficiently. However, despite all the successes, such technologies have a bottleneck. The huge power consumption leads to a dead end. The solution could be special neuromorphic processors. They operate on the same principles as the human brain and therefore provide up to a thousand times lower power consumption compared to graphics processors and speed up processes. The race here is as intense as in the quantum field. All leading countries have their own developments and they are strictly prohibited from being exported. Luckily, Russia isn't wasting time either. As of today, we have our own neuromorphic processor, Altai, from the Novosibirsk company Motiv NT in July. Production of the third generation of this processor will begin. It is especially relevant where ultra-fast autonomous computing is required. For example, in drones, self-driving cars, and robotics. Essentially, it's a small electronic brain that doesn't require a connection to the cloud to operate it also doesn't need huge amounts of energy and therefore doesn't require complex cooling. Another advantage is scalability, which means it can be used to build both powerful data centers and supercomputers. Thus, contrary to the popular belief that Russia is hopelessly behind in computer technologies, we see that the country holds a strong position in new fields that will revolutionize the entire industry tomorrow.